Well, what's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's having a great day. Um, we just had the other shoe drop. Let me turn the camera just a little bit here. The other shoe drop, Jordan Love has now gotten paid. He got a four-year extension worth $220 million. Um, the deal negotiated by, okay, let me see. Um, I was trying to get the breakdown on it. The signing bonus is $75 million, a record-setting $75 million to sign. Oh, my God. $75 million to sign. Plus $155 million in full guarantees. Deal negotiated by David Manuga and Andrew Kessler of uh, Athletes First. So that is a $55 million per year deal. Which may be good news for the Dallas Cowboys because, you know, thought was that we were looking at 56, 57 between Tua and so on. Um, it's kind of crazy that... Uh, Trevor Lawrence got the 55. Um, I'm not trying to say anything against Trevor Lawrence, but I don't look at him as the highest, that he should have been the highest paid uh, quarterback. You know, I don't think he's on the level of Joe Burrow if Joe Burrow is healthy. Um, the 201 at 53.1, um, I was surprised that he didn't get the 55. I actually think Tua is a better quarterback than Trevor Lawrence. Uh, although the question, of course, with him is uh, the injuries of the concussions and stuff that he had a couple of years ago. Um, but if you're looking at this and you could say, well, Dak Prescott, you could sign him for 56 and he could be the highest paid and it's not as bad as the 60. Um, and so maybe there's now a sense of urgency for the Cowboys to get this thing done. A couple of things in the dynamic here. So now that we've got those guys paid, because you have to figure that Pat Mahomes is going to be looking for some more money at some point in the near future as well. Um, Jordan Love. Here's the thing that's interesting to me is, and, and you can call me a hater if you want to. That's fine. Um, the thing with Jordan Love is Jordan Love has started for one season. One season. That's it. That's the book. They had a last play schedule. They had a lot of cake teams. And they started out two and five. Now, they played better going down the stretch, finishing out nine and eight, and making the playoffs and beating the Cowboys. In my mind, Jordan Love, is it the first half of the season, Jordan Love? Or is the second half of the season Jordan Love? And now that there's been an off season where coaches, defensive coordinators, have now gone through and they've picked your game apart and finding out your weaknesses, will you see a regression? Will you look at this and say, man, they paid him a lot of money and maybe he's not worth it? I don't know. And I'm not trying to throw shade on it. I'm just trying to give you food for thought on here. Um, that there's not a lot of history to look at it. I mean, Tua, you can say, okay, yeah, he's had three years of being the starter. You kind of see the book and you see where the trends of things are. Dak Prescott, you have the nine years are going into your ninth year. Um, and people will say, well, yeah, of course, don't pay him because they're having the playoff struggles. But as we go through the Cowboys situation and the Cowboys lack of Super Bowl championships, if the Cowboys were making Super Bowls over the last 30 years or NFC Championship games, and then they stopped after they got Dak Prescott, then you could say, yeah, well, that's Dak Prescott is the problem. But we're talking about having Dak Prescott do something that the Dallas Cowboys haven't been able to do over 21 years, or excuse me, 22 years before he got here. That I don't know that you can now put the blame on him solely. But we'll see, and we'll see if the Cowboys can get this thing together. I felt like yesterday was the begging and pleading on both sides to try and get their deals done, where Dak Prescott is basically letting you know, I'm okay if I have to go, and the Jones is basically trying to say, you know, if we pay Dak, then we, we have to gut the team and this, that, and the other. Both of them were trying to make their argument to try and get the deal. I still think that if I'm Dak Prescott, 
I don't know that if I get fifty-six million, it's any different than if I'm getting fifty million. I don't know that you will really feel the difference in money. Maybe the stature part of it, but if it's going to be, if you're going to go to the Joneses, I would like for them to actually have a come to Jesus moment. Instead of both sides negotiating this and talking about it in the media, sit down and find out what is our goal. If I'm Dak Prescott, I'm focused on wanting to get a Super Bowl. That's what I'm focused on. Jerry, what are you focused on? Is it just trying to, you know, feel like you can make a player suffer and get the deal that you want to get for him and everything else? Or is it about trying to win a Super Bowl? You're 81 years old. You ain't getting any younger. If it's about a Super Bowl and getting a deal, then let's get the deal done and use that money. But I still believe Dak can play for $1. And Steven ain't going to go out and spend the money. He's not going to bring any other talent in. That's my own personal take. But then again, what do I know? I'm a guy with a day job and a voodoo doll. And we know Jordan Love has been paid. So we've seen some more leaves falling. It's time to get this thing done. All right, good people. I will catch you guys on the flip side. Peace out.